listening to Back to Back. To Information Man, please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Okay, everybody, thank you for being here, Radio Live. This is the Black to Black Show, Radio Live. I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, this has been a great experience doing this, trying to bring information to people. I want to talk a little bit about military service. Now, you know, black men, uh, we've been in every, uh, black men, black people have fought in every war this country has ever had, uh, ever been in, going all the way back to the Revolutionary War, World War One, World War Two, Civil War. Uh, Chris Fitz Addicts was the first to die, black man in the Revolutionary War, and as Khalid Muhammad says he deserved to pass away because he fought on the wrong side. Black men have always been involved in trying to show our patriotism. Black people overall are the most patriot of this of anyone in this country. And I say that with a capital P, a capital C, and a capital period, I mean. We're the most patriotic people on this planet. We fought in every war, and a lot of times we gave up our lives, and our ancestors fought to give us to get us freedom. And then somehow, a lot of times, black men would fight in wars to prove that they were patriotic and that they were equal to be treated as equal in this country as a citizen. OK, so when you look at history, a lot of your riots that happened in this country happened due to black men coming back from war. They didn't like seeing black men in those uniforms with those stripes on. And a lot of times black men were hung. Uh, because of it, a lot of times riots occurred because you had black men that came back from war that just weren't having it. OK, now, personally, myself, I don't think that uh, black people have any business in the military, because why would you fight for a country that does not truly love you and then come back home and be treated as such? Now, like Muhammad Ali said, no Viet Cong has ever called him a nigga. He did not want to fight in the war. He refused to go, refused to be enlisted because of his religious beliefs. And he said, hey, I'm, why would I fight for a country that doesn't fight for me here at home? OK, I'm talking about the Muhammad Ali, who was young, brash and told it like it is not the one that everybody loved because he could not talk anymore. And he suffered from a Parkinson condition. Right. Everyone seemed to love that Muhammad Ali, but not the one that told it like it is. OK. <laughs> Welcome for being, I want to thank everybody for being here. Welcome to you all. Excuse me there. But let me just, uh, let me just say this right now. This is very important. Um, we got to know our history. And I think it's very important because a lot of us run around and we say that Lincoln freed the slaves. He freed some slaves. He did not free all slaves. He did it as a, there was a book that I read, Capitalism and Slavery where it lays out the, how, the whole perspective of Abraham Lincoln. He simply wanted to keep the union together and he would do anything he could to keep this country together. If it meant not freeing black people out of slavery, he would have done it. In the document of that book, he talks about that. Um, another thing we need to keep in mind, uh, Ma Malcolm X talked about how anything below Canada was south to him because when, what was the first state in this country that ended slavery? Was it Alabama? This is, what was it? Alabama? Was it Texas? 
Uh, come on, let's think about it. it. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm giving you a clue. It wasn't a southern state. It was a northern state. And if I'm not mistaken, it was New Jersey. New Jersey is the last state. New Jersey, right next to New York. Go figure. Um, New Jersey was the last state uh, to end the slave system. Excuse me, a little bit of problem with my nose there, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm intact here, folks. So um, New Jersey was the first state to end slavery. Go figure. A northern state. OK, now I'm going to go into this battle. I got to give a lot of shout out to one Tariq Nasheed because I heard him talk about this on the show. He's thinking about doing a movie about this documentary about the Battle Island Mound and African-American soldiers. Now, these were soldiers made up of the Kansas colored volunteers. OK, 1862, there was a fierce battle in this area, this historical place where a small regiment of black men took on a large regiment of about 400 and I think it was 166 uh, black men versus 400 federal uh, uh, Confederate troops from the South who vigorously said that they would kill any black person, any black man. They weren't taking anybody and Tariq spoke about this briefly on his program so he kind of inspired me to go a little bit deeper into this um, about this particular group of black men they call it a skirmish, uh, a, 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 you know, a little skirmish, right? They, they tried to minimize it. Tariq said on his channel that he made a good point that when black people have strong accomplishments uh, like this, they try to minimize it and say, oh, it was just a little skirmish between the two. No, it was an outright assault of uh, black people, black, these black troops, they held their own and they did, they did a lot of damage to the Confederate uh, troops that came up there starting trouble there in uh, Missouri. I'm going to go into this article that I have here, read a little bit of it, and lay it out for you as best I can. And once again, if you're liking what Information Man is doing here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate everyone's support. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. I appreciate that. Okay, so let me go into it. Hang on for a moment. Let me go into it for a moment here because um, this is a very important historical history that I want to get into um, with everybody out there. And I thank you for supporting the program. The History of African American Soldiers. This is a highlight. Now, all at the beginning of the war, President Lincoln refused to accept ex-slaves, okay, he refused to accept them, ex-slaves, or African Americans into the military uh, services because he was concerned about how it would affect the psyche uh, and the attitudes of not only the whites, not only the um, southern border states, but he was concerned about how it would also uh, impact and affect the northerners. Who weren't going for it as well. This is history. Okay. He feared that angering the border states such as Missouri and Kentucky. In addition, he knew that the majority of Northerners were not opposed to African American troops because of the racial bias. Okay. So let me just read that here. He, 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 he feared the angering of the border states such as Missouri and Kentucky. In addition, he knew that the majority of Northerners were opposed to African-American troops because of racial bias. He knew this, okay? As the war raged on, the idea of enlisting African-American, um, African-Americans as soldiers get, get grew in popularity. Lincoln moved forward with this, but he was very concerned. Again, I'm going to say he was very concerned about this, folks. Uh, he passed multiple proclamations, basically. So he, he, he had to pass multiple proclamations to push this forward, to create and to enact this into reality, to allow uh, for to allow for enslaved Southerners to be taken into the federal army. Okay. He still 
refused to allow African-American troops to actually fight. So even though he took them into the army, he did not allow them to fight. The first African-American regiment was raised by Colonel James um, Montgomery, Colonel James Montgomery in South Carolina. But Lincoln forced it to disband so-called Lincoln, who freed the slaves, disband because he still feared angered, angering uh, slave holders in the border states. OK, so your so-called this so-called Lincoln who freed the slaves, everybody goes to Washington, D.C. and they go to his monument. you got black folks singing hymns about him freeing us. He was more concerned technically about about the offending white Southerners who were slave holders. And he was also concerned about um, white Northerners. So this whole numer about him caring about us, not necessarily true, folks. Now, the first can't now. The first Kansas was authorized by General James H. Lane on August 4th, 1862. They call them the first Kansas. This is the Colored Volunteer Troops Regiment, right? The Battle of Island Mound. From October 27th to October 29th, 1862, the first Kansas endured several skirmishes. Now they call it a skirmish, but like Tariq said, it was a battle, okay? They wanna minimize everything that we do, folks, that is significant. This was a battle, not a skirmish, with the Confederate guerrillas, and they call them themselves the Confederate guerrillas. Now the Confederate guerrillas, these skirmishes as they call it, but we know it's a battle, became known as the Battle of Island Mound and significant, it was signified the first time African-American unit engaged in enemy battle with the enemy, which would be the Con Southern Confederate Army, who, by the way, declared that they would kill. Just having some libations right now. That they would kill any of these so-called, or what they call so-called black troops. Now, African-American units engaged in enemy and combat. The first Kansas was sent to Missouri. So the first Kansas was the name of this um, ex-slaves that brothers that had enlisted in that were brought into the federal army at the time and fight against the Confederate army. OK. This is just the truth. The, now, the first Kansas was sent to the Missouri from the border, from the from Brawl, from the uh, Belmont County, Kansas, on Sunday, October twenty sixth, to combat to to combat guerrillas opening from the Hog Island. Captain H. C. led the regiment, which numbered approximately two hundred and fifty men. So two hundred and 50 men, black men, if I'm not mistaken, black men. So I, said, I said earlier 166, but it was actually a 250 black men, if I'm not mistaken. And if I'm not mistaken, um, they went against 400 white Confederate troops. Okay, so it was 250 black men. On Monday, October 27th, the first Kansas crossed into Missouri at Dixie Crossing and occupied a farm owned by Topman, okay? Suspected some Southern sympathizer. So this is someone who was a suspected Southern sympathizer. They commandeered his home, okay? Preparing themselves for a battle, okay? Now, the farm was doubled fort for Africa. So according to the to the article here, it says the farm the farm was doubled fort Africa. They called it double fort Africa. Okay, let me correct that. Double fort Africa. 
Almost immediately, the regiment engaged the enemy. Boom, 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 engaged. Okay? It's very important. Tell the truth. So they engaged the troops. They're ready to engage the Confederate army. Okay? Almost immediately, the regiment engaged the enemies in long-range skirmishes. It was a battle, folks. By Tuesday, October 28th, the 1st Kansas sent for reinforcements. The fighting continued the next day with a hand-to-hand -hand fighting. When the guerrillas attacked, Fort Africa, Fort Africa was the fort, commandeer, when they took that sympathizer's home, turned it into the fort, and the first Kansas held their own against these Confederate guerrillas, these Southern Confederate guerrillas who wanted to kill them. This is according to the history. They wanted to take them out. They said they weren't taking any captures, okay? On October 28th, the first Kansas sent for reinforcements. The fight continued, as I said before, okay? The guerrillas, the Confederate Army, tried to attack the Fort Africa, as it was called, as I said before. Although outnumbered, the brothers were outnumbered, they drove the enemies back. Should I say that with much more? Th they drove the enemies back. Reinforcements arrived. The next day, on Thursday, October 30th, they found that the guerrillas' camp had been abandoned. The, men, the enemies had tried to avoid more battling with reinforcement regiments about the victory of the 1st Kansas encouraged their mustering into federal services months later on. January 13th, 1863, after December 13th, 1864, they were dis they were dis mm, disengaged. The 79th United States Colored Troops. They served for remainder of the of the war. So this is the bottom line. This is the bottom line. You had the Battle of Island Mound in Missouri. The brothers took on, they don't tell you this history. They don't want us knowing this history. They want to keep it secret from us as if it never existed. This is why it's important for us as a people to understand our role in this country and this is why we have the right to demand, and I say demand again, reparations, because our people have fought in all these wars. We've engaged in battles. We have tried to fight for the country, for the freedom that the country claims to stand for. The United Snakes of America, and the original flag was called the United Snakes of America before you have the flag that you have now. Now. The aftermath of this battle, eventually the 166th African-American Regiment. So I was right. It was a 166 African-American male regiments were raised. They were what you call the Kansas Volunteers. As I said before, the African-American soldiers had a profound impact on the war, war the Civil War. OK, they fought and died for the cause of freedom. Though they historically, historical acts, this is a historical act, okay? They encouraged the passing of the Emancipation Proclamation as we know. The Emancipation Proclamation as we know it today. Thus, the end of slavery. So this is what these brothers fought for. They fought for freedom, justice, equality, and for what we call the emancipation. Now, as we know today, 
the emancipation never really gave us true freedom. But these brothers fought for the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality that they did not get. This is why we as black people today and as people in general need to be thankful for that which we do have because there were others who put up a fight for us. So we need to really watch ourselves when we say that the pe black people in the past didn't fight anything or that black men never stood up against oppression. Black men have had a history of doing this from time immemorial. Now, I read this article because it was very important to bring this to bear. And let me let me bring up something else for you. The Battle of the Island of Mound State Historical Site. It's a historical site right now, folks. The Battle of Mound Historical Site is located in rural area of Batten County, Missouri, in the western part of the state. The site was established to preserve the area of American Civil Battle that took place October 28, 29, 1862, between Union forces and the Confederate guerrillas. The battle was significant as the first African-American troops on the Union side engaged enemies. While troops in the Civil War, okay, this is very important um, landmark and site. This area was active when the guerrillas uh, raided the party from other sides. So they raided, they tried to, you know, this is a historical site. Basically, the guerrillas were a Confederate um, fat faction trying to take over um, the South, trying to maintain their, their foothold on maintaining their way of life, which was slavery was a big part of their way of life because they were making money off of free labor, our people's labor. And really the North was concerned about that primarily because they were making money and they didn't want the uh, South to break away from the Union, from the North, because they, if they were to do that, they could sustain themselves because with having slavery, they can sustain their own economics. So what's, what Lincoln simply did when he freed some slaves but not free all. And what he basically did is he put economic sanctions on the South. By So if you want to hurt their main bread and butter, which was slavery, you simply free some slaves to send a message to them. This is what we can do to you. OK, now, do I believe that the military is the best place for us to be? It's a matter of people's opinions about what you believe. But what I believe is that we have to be a, we have to be aware as a people that it's very hard pill to swallow to fight for a country that may not love you and give your life and give your all. I have to be honest about that. Okay? It was the Kansas Colored Volunteers that took on the Confederate guerrillas and battled them, destroyed them. The information that I have here is that there were only six black people that died in this battle, but a many of white people were killed by uh, in this battle because it was a war by the all Kansas colored volunteer troops that were enlisted into the into this military. They call them the first Kansas is what they were called. And I have to say that we have to cherish our history because our history is a part of us. It is who we are, it is what makes us what we are today, and we lay on that legacy, and this is why reparations, once again, is necessary, because our people gave a hell of a sacrifice. I wanna thank everybody that is listening to the program. I wanna thank you for being here and supporting the program. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you subscribe to the program. This is the Information Man.
him back. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Thank you.